RPS. Love from Premier Beta Sound 2022. Proudly presented by Cupra. You're listening to Radio Primavera Sound from the Forum here in Barcelona. We're still at Primavera Sound 2022, second day, and it is with great pleasure that I introduce our next guest here in our studio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jenny Beth. She's with us. Hello. 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 Thanks for having me. Welcome. Well, well, welcome back. You. Yeah, welcome back. Third time for me. Yeah. Very pleased. And first time solo? First time solo, yeah. Wow. What does it feel like coming back here with all the memories? What memories do you have? What, do you, what memories do you cherish? Mem- yeah, I have great memories. I came twice with my band Savages before. And obviously I was booked for 2020. Uh, Primavera 2020, which couldn't happen. So I'm, I'm really delighted. I mean, it was um, one thing to go solo, but it was another thing to be able to play such festivals on my own. So I feel like it's a great achievement and I can't wait to play tonight. Yeah, that's the thing. When you come with a band where you figured out, uh, you know, a musical language and you've created an album together, you, you kind of feel reinforced as a gang. But coming solo, did you feel, do you feel, did those first solo shows that you were performing, did you feel a little bit, um, how do you say, vulnerable? Well, I don't, I mean, you always feel some kind of, um, uh, I don't know, some kind of fear or wherever it comes from. Um, but I don't feel, I mean, fear is <clears throat> something I, I've uh, learned to cope with. Um, but on stage, once I'm on stage, I don't feel that anymore. I feel free. It starts with an F, but it's not the same feeling. <laughs> do, do, do you, are you good at turning negative emotions into a, a power source? <laughs> I don't know. I try. I don't know. Maybe in a creative sense, maybe that's what you have to try to do the most. Yeah. And well, you're, you're playing both the festival big stage and um, La Ciudad, a sort of smaller venue. Yes. Is that going to be very different, what you do? Are you going to change? I don't know. I think uh, big stages or small clubs are, you know, where I've performed over the years a lot. And I've done, you know, I've been from one to the other. So I'm kind of used. They're, they're a different vibe, but I, I love them both. It feels, they both feel kind of, um, um, I give the 100% each time, you know. But do you have a way when it's a really large crowd of mm. sort of reducing that that distance between... Yeah, I do. <laughs> do you want my tricks? <laughs> I mean, I'm unlikely to be playing to a large crowd, but it's interesting to know. Like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I always feel like if you're talking to a massive crowd, actually Josh Homie said that, to me once from Queens of the Stone Age. She said, if, you, if you're if you talking to a, a crowd, whether it's 10 to 80,000, it doesn't matter. You have to ask yes or no questions. Otherwise, it gets really confusing. So that was one thing I, <clears throat> I always tried to do. Um, but also you have to feel like you're talking to one person. You know, I, I would speak to a crowd the same way I'm speaking to you right now, I, I guess. Yeah. Because some, sometimes when, when I go to see a band... Yeah. Ever so occasionally, I get the impression that they're singing just to me, just for a moment. Oh, here you go. Oh, well. Is, is that it? Well, that was one of the things. Am when, I deluded? <laughs> no, you're not. I think that that's a proof of a good performer, I suppose. When I started Savages, I, it was in, in London and it was a time when indie rock was kind of um, dying. <laughs> well, it, it was starting to not feel very exciting, I felt, because um, bands were sort of uh, shoegazing, you know, huh? And and crowds were sort of standing still, and and I felt very bored at shows. And with Savages, I always had this thing where I felt the only thing I need to do is stare people in the eye, and that single sort of uh, different. It made a difference mm. straight away. But I remember you were so brave because you'd you'd crowd surf, you'd launch into these into these fr- front rows at festivals. It can you know, I've, there's there's a question of the, you know, f- f- friends of mine who are, f- are w- female singers, they said, look, you always end up getting a little bit groped when you're a woman, you know, into a crowd of rock, <laughs> a, a rock crowd, shall we say. Yeah. Um, but so you're suggesting I, got, I like to be grabbed? <laughs> no, no. Oh my goodness, no. I kind of do. Um, <laughs> okay, no, but like, right. <laughs> I still do it. Um, I still go to the crowd. I still crowd surf. Yeah. Of, I mean, um, I always did that. Um, 
uh, even at Savage's shows, and I still do them on my own shows. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel there's an essential part of, you know, all my favorite performers like Iggy Pop or Peaches or all these performers do it. And I've always felt that that was um, something I really enjoyed doing, but yeah. in my own way. Yeah. You know? No, no I, and I did always get the sense that <laughs> crowds, at least Savage's fans, are respectful and they weren't going to do anything. But in a festival, sometimes you've got pirates and pirates of the Caribbean in there, you know? Just, no, no, sorry, I didn't mean the Caribbean as in a. I'm, a, I'm just trying to paint a picture. <clears throat> oh, shit, now I'm gonna go yeah, going to go into the Johnny Depp Amber Heard yeah. thing. I'm going into a garden. I'm enjoying it. Let's, where does this go? So, uh -huh. <laughs> no, but what I mean is sometimes in a festival, you get rowdy crowds, I people who know. throw bottles of piss at, at the artists and stuff. Um, but you right. that's what I mean about the bravery <laughs> of launching into right. these masses. I don't know. I just feel like once you step on stage, it, you're the master, you know, you're you're in control. You you tell people you have a power, you know, and I, I don't feel powerless yeah. when I'm on stage. I, I feel fearless. And... You, you mentioned Iggy Pop, which I thought was a nice way of uh, linking. Mm. Um, to Love is to Live <clears throat> was yeah. inspired by learning that David Bowie had died. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That, so that's my first solo record, which came out in 2020, sadly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we did two shows and then confinement happened. Um, but yeah, I w it was when David Bowie died, it was the night time I was in LA. I was going to release the second album with Savages and I opened my phone and I found out and then I didn't sleep and I sort of, I listened to all of his music I cried, you know, I was like sort of Im very impacted by this, dis his disparation. Um, but I, um, I think I made this sort of promise with myself that I, I hadn't made a record that was totally mine and, and would be sort of a statement um, of what I felt that life on earth would be. And, and his death reminded me that we're not eternal. You know, I always thought Bowie would live on forever, you know. Can I ask a slightly <clears throat> morbid question? But in, in sure, I love by it. That. Go ahead. <laughs> because obviously, David Bowie's last album, Black mm -hmm. Star, was released a, a few days a few before, days he, before died. he died. Yeah. And suddenly, when when I found out he died, suddenly the album was in a to totally different light. It yeah, I mean, Lazarus starts with "Look, look up here, I'm in heaven." That's the first song I played when I heard he was dead. Do you, Do you ever think? And this is the sort of morbid bit. What What people mm. will, you know. Um, think of your of your music after you you have died, or what sort of yeah. trace you'll you'll I leave. I sort of or? think about it every day. I have to say, <laughs> I think about death every day. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think death is a celebration of life as well. If you don't, we spend a lifetime thinking we're we're not going to die, which sort of it, it 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 takes all the point of life out of it. You know. Mm. Living is, is if you want to grab life, you need to realize that this is it and it's going to go away. And that realization makes life more dense, more, more, makes you more sensitive to it, you know, makes you more, um, also kind probably, or open. Um, and, and when I did to love, when I wrote to love is to live, <clears throat> every day I thought about my own death because I was thinking if I die before this album is out, I, I would have really not done what I wanted to do on this earth. Can I, uh, in, on, on that, I mean, if you uh, had died before it had come out, would you mm. wanted it to come out? Because <laughs> it, it, it's... I don't really care, I'm gone. <laughs> Fair no. enough, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, it's not really... Maybe, maybe, yeah. If it's finished, I you mean, know. I was, I had this conversation with PG Harvey. She told me that, um, uh, you know, she was, um, she was a... Um, she, she had something happen to her when she did a white chalk mm. and when and she had a sort of a near death experience i wouldn't say what it was cuz it's no, for right, her to say but and then she felt, <laughs> when it happened the first thought that came to her head was the album is mixed <laughs> <laughs> and john parrish has it and flood has it and so it's okay i can die you know and i think that's the sort of connection we can have with our work Sometimes mm. it's it's almost like or it's part of who we are. It's almost like people with their children, I guess. You know, it's sort of what you, it's your legacy. You know, it's what you leave behind. And having people you can trust with your legacy. Do you, exactly. You have like PJ has John Parrish, yeah. as you say, and and Fl Flood, Flood, Flood yeah. who was you know helming the production. Yeah. Do you have a, a good network of people who would take <laughs> care 
of of your legacy and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I know you're young, Jenny. This is a this is, we shouldn't be having this. No, I do. <laughs> I, I work with Johnny Hostile, and I've worked with him for 18 years now. So I think um, uh, I think he would be the person, yeah, <laughs> to handle things. just one. But is that enough? I mean, like, well, yeah, the, it, yeah. I'll work on that. <laughs> I was just remembering. I saw I saw your band when it when it was John and Jen. Back in, in wow, that was a long time yeah, ago. Like yeah, like 2006. Or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. It was really, really good. It's really good. Yeah, I, I moved to London when I was 20 and I was in that band for a few years. Yeah, John and Jen. And we, we were talking about this yesterday with the Linda Lindas, who are incredibly young. I mean, the youngest mm. member is 11 years old. You know, this <coughs> uh, <laughs> punk band, uh, the girl, a riot girl punk band from, so cool. from California. So cool. And uh, I, was, <coughs> I brought up how the fact that so many uh, of today's legendary cutting edge pop artists like Bjork or even Belinda Carlisle if you'll admit if, if we can put it into a conversation mm. came from punk bands mm, yeah. and just like you did but for on to love is to live you've 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 gone up a notch out of the mm. punk it's not punk it, mm. it, it can you know what I mean you've, you've you've embraced a bit more electronica a bit more experimentation mm. yeah it came from collaborations I I, I did uh, I worked with Damon Albarn on his uh, record humans for gorillas I did some sessions with 3D of Massive Attack. Actually, we nothing came out of it, but apart from a good friendship and some good experimentations. But um, I collaborated with Trent Muller. With mm -hmm. <clears throat> all these collaborations, uh, enlightened me in the fact that I I could take sort of my voice and my aesthetic in different worlds, and it, in, and it, it, I felt really interested in in exploring that more. Um, Savages is a punk band, and I love Savages so much. But I felt um, a, a desire to to try other avenues and in terms of production to work with different people i went to see atticus ross from nine inch nails mm. he did three tracks and and i worked with flood um johnny hostile i worked with rami madley croft from the xx yeah. who co-wrote some of the songs on the record i invited joe uh talbot from idols to sing so it's just a, it <clears throat> i i think i i i'm curious about other people's creativity and i like the clash of Actually, I think Bjork said something similar when she said when she invites someone in, it's she wants them to be 100% free in her own world, you know. Yeah. Um, she's not trying to control them when they come in. So I think To Love Is To Live was kind of done in that similar, you know, uh, mindset. You you have the most amazing like phone agenda like contact <laughs> list. I mean every I think every artist on the Primavera Sound lineup of every year is friends with you. Uh, it, does this how does these how do you obviously I don't think there's anyone who would not pick up your your phone call and and like oh, and come into the, your world and collaborate. That. Like has anyone ever said no? Uh, like no, look, I don't um, do these kind of things. Let me think. That you've approached. Um, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some people sometimes you are in a different mindset. I mean, uh, I did a collaboration with a French artist recently. Uh, I mean, a year or two ago, uh, called Roan. He's an electronic artist, and he had been years. He asked me if I wanted to sing on his one of his songs, and and when confinement happened, I suddenly thought, oh, I have time, maybe. But I didn't have the mindset before the time to think about that collaboration. Yeah. Um. So. It's it's about where you are in your life at that point as mm. well. <laughs> you, you've mentioned Damon Albarn. Um, yeah. Gorillas are performing <coughs> at Primavera tomorrow, Sound, yeah. it, and it's tomorrow. What, is there a, is there a chance that you might <laughs> be joining them for for you, the song that you? I think I'll just enjoy the show on that one. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, because you never know with Gorillas who's going to exactly. come. I mean, there's so many people on those albums, that, that, and it's usually a question of a it's... of can I make it to the to the city? But you're actually going to be here, girl. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, people are angry enough at Primavera this year because of the water I shortage know. and the queues and stuff. It's we got to give the strokes uh, pulling, you know, know. cancelling. And that was it's very terrible. unfortunate, but COVID is still real. I'm I toured with Coralis for a couple of years when it was really amazing. Their, their family, they're really uh, solid, like, f people. And I really love them. And all the singers are incredible. It's been a quite... I mean, Damon is a life force. He's, he's really impressive. We, you know, the, the 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 amount of work he does is incredible. Like he, when we were on tour, he would he would play stadiums in the night, wake up at six a.m., do yoga together. Then he'll go all day in the studio. Oh, so Damon does yoga, and then yeah, he does, and I then <laughs> and then stadium, 
and then party and then and all over again it's in, it's who does that i don't know did you have conversations with him about death because he also seems to be like <laughs> m- m- do- seizing the moment and putting out as much he is yeah i mean it's very impressive it's very inspiring because he does it you know he just it's this kind of thing where don't think just do yeah i think he has that he has that you're right i think it's a when i say life force it's, it's really he's unstoppable and I, it was really inspiring. I think I always think touring with gorillas must be amazing because you go into a, yeah. a city and like you're there with I don't know 30, 40 people like and yeah. all of them it's a whole family. It's a yeah. of different generations. Like yeah, totally. You, you'll be with some young grime artist or with De La Soul or with uh, yeah De La Soul uh, Paul there. Simonon. <laughs> yeah, Jamie Principal was there. Little Sims. Like it was a whole family. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Damon can just sort of say, look at the lineup. All right, who's playing today? Right, what time? You, you, you come here at, uh, 15 minutes before show. You come over here. After. It felt like a football team. That's what we were saying. <laughs> like with De La Soul, they'll, they'll come and we'll just slap each other's hands and go in the field, you know? Yeah, yeah. It felt, it felt really like Back a team. football team. Yeah, go back to the bench. It's my turn <laughs> yeah, now exactly. to score. There's some attackers, there's some defenders. Yeah. Another British legend that you've collaborated with uh, very closely you've made a wonderful beautiful album Utopian Ashes with Mr. Bobby Gillespie of Primal Scream can, yeah. you, can you tell us how how did that collaboration come apart what's the story there well Bobby approached me to write some songs together uh, after after we played Massive Attack did a big festival in Bristol and Pr- Primal Scream played at Savages played so after the show he asked me if I wanted to do some song writing so I said yes, and um, they came to uh, to Paris in my studio. We worked on some songs, and then <clears throat> and then he sort of um, th- then he had the idea for the record, like really clearly. He said, "I want to do a duet record," and he started writing more and more and more. And I was writing my own solo record, so eventually I was sort of um, I, I I was sort of uh, telling him, "Just go on, do your record, and call me when you need me to." to sing on some stuff. So then I wrote my parts and, and I just came in the studio, did my parts. And then I kind of thought, this is going to be a Bobby Gillespie record, you know? And then he didn't want to. He said, no, it's a, I wanted to, like the tradition of old folk sort of duet records. Um, like Nancy Sinatra Lee has, a, although the sound is quite different. And and so I felt like that sounds like a great idea. And so I, I said, yes. So, so then we released that record, but it's really Bobby's record in the sense that, you know what I mean? Like it's his vision, it's his sound, it's his musicians. And and I just felt at the time it was, you know, a great learning experience to be sort of on the back seat of a project because it's rare when that happens on, on, the, on the whole record for me. <clears throat> and I felt that there was a lot for me to learn there. And he's great to watch and it's great to, you know, to, to to share, you know, to be in a studio with. He actually said to me that was one of his favorite experiences in the studio of his whole life. We had, yeah, it was a great vibe. It was really great. Well, that's got to be your influence. I mean, every, every, uh, the <coughs> sense I get that you, the reason why you, you get invited to collaborate with so many people and people are so willing to work with you is that you must bring an energy to the table that that makes, the, mm. the, the, that creates this, uh, what do you call it? This chemistry, chemistry, this mm. wonderful thing. Uh can you kind of look at yourself from outside and think, where do you get this from? Is it something that you've inherited from a grandparent? From Is oh. it something that's typical in, in your family? <laughs> well, that's very nice of you to say. I don't know. I I don't know. I think Bobby, when we did interviews after, he, he mentioned that I gave him the space and the confidence for him to say all these difficult things I wanted to say on the record and I think I always encourage him to be. I could say I could sense he wanted to be honest on it because it's a lot of it. The record is about drug addiction and recovering from that, and all the bad is done, you know. Um, and I always felt, you know, that I always encourage him. I, you know, when he doubts that he's it too much, I'm saying too much. I'm like, no, no, this is this is. I've, I have chills listening to you. You know, it's great. Like you should really carry on. So I d- I don't know if that's. You know, that's what I did for that project, I suppose. One thing I really <clears throat> love about that record mm. is um, it seems to me to be kind of mature. It and I is, mean, I, yeah. I mean that in a good yeah. way. It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's an adult. It's a grown-up yeah. record. <laughs> Songs of the divorce in a way, no? And, yeah. And yeah, adult problems. But yeah, it's, it's a record about a man who has lived. Yeah. I want to ask as well... Um, because Johan, you, you mentioned the family. You come from um, both of your parents are theatre directors, yeah. I believe. And you, you, my father was uh, your father. Yeah. 
Um, and you, uh, you're known for your acting as well, which I think came before before singing, right? Or... Yeah, yeah. I was in a drama school, and then I did a movie when I was 17 wow. in France, and then I moved to. But music was always my <clears throat> sort of uh, real, real love, and also being an actress is kind of not a job. I mean, it's kind of, it's like, it's like. It, Best case scenario, you do one big role a year and you work for two months and then the rest is just boring. You know, you yeah. just wait for stuff to happen. So unless yeah. you do theater, I think theater is kind of, you have to read more and prepare more. But um, so, I, but when I moved to Paris five years ago, I, I was asked if I wanted to cast for a role and then I sort of started in my mind, it was a good timing because I started to think, oh, I could do acting again, it would be fun. And um and then I did that. Then, then it was sort of, he sort of uh, started this whole thing. When now I'm, I've been doing quite a lot of French movies since, which I'm very grateful for. Is it? Is it <laughs> sort of? Is that acting and singing very different, <clears throat> or do they come from the same place for for you anyway? Well, <clears throat> the lifestyle is different, and I'm not saying, not not because a musician lifestyle is crazy or whatever, but I think. When I'm a musician, I'm an artist. And when I'm an actress, I'm more serving someone else's, another artist's vision. Yeah. Um, but when action starts, when, when the director says action and then you act, that's when the creation is. That's when the invention it comes. And that's yeah. when it gets really creative and inventive and, and fun. And, and you're really dealing with the raw material of things and you're creating something. But the rest of the time, you're not the one creating, you know, the light story the, the the camera angles that so but the, what i like about cinema is like it's a real collaborative work and the few roles i had i realized that it was um you know it was if we were five or six people thinking of the same character together and bringing ideas in together and mm. so you're not alone and i like that very much it's a troop thing yeah but, i find it very interesting because like whenever um <clears throat> whenever singers release a song or an album or whatever or bands do we always think that that's their emotions you know like if, if somebody totally. says I, I'm sad I it's agree. like oh okay that, that specific Jenny that is sad whereas when people are acting I agree so have, I you, agree. have you thought about that have you ever thought like yeah. I'm going to do I'm going to do an <laughs> album where I am acting these are not my emotions <laughs> I'm going to sing about like <laughs> I don't know yeah from someone else's perspective no like you can do that sometimes right from somebody else's perspective and sometimes it makes better songs uh, maybe um, sometimes I get a bit tired about the overpouring of honesty and emotion and self-awareness that you always read in album statements of, you know, young artists coming out. And I just found it interesting sometimes, but also sometimes it's almost too much to bear. And mm. and maybe honesty is in performance as well. It's not necessarily in... Um, oh, I had an operation, I almost died, and, you know. But we all do that because, in a way, <clears throat> you can hear when music comes from a right, you know, honest place and something you've lived. So you're right, it's very different, but I feel there's also a character. I, don't, I For example, Patti Smith, it's a character yeah. as well, you know. Yeah. Or and, and you have to also, you have to um, respect that, you know. Patti Smith has to respect her own character, you know. Yeah. She has to not destroy that because that's what people need and love. The illusion. No? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's an illusion. It's Because, uh, like, I'm sure Patti Smith must have a moment in, in, in the week when she's like, gets angry at something on the street and she's like, oh, and she feels like she's not always a good person, oh, you mean? You know, go <laughs> stuff yourself. <laughs> Yeah. But it's like you know, but but it's out of character. Oh well, a New Yorker can get can get away with being a little bit grumpy on the street. True. But you know what I mean, where Patty Smith has been like, you know, people yeah. have the power, and she's like a force yeah. who draws people together. And all of a sudden, like being like petty, all of a sudden, yeah. because it's a human thing, you can be totally. angry at someone like you know driving and. With but a, she knows a the power of the the persona she's created, and she knows the importance of it, and it's where all her creativity comes from, yeah. and you have to protect that. So, um, so my next question, sorry, mm. Ben, is, no, 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 go for it. You go for it. Is it hard work being Jenny Beth all the time? <laughs> well, I'm not always Jenny Beth, let's say, um, but it is hard work. Yeah, of course, everything is hard work. Because <laughs> it's like, you... but it's also a joy. It's also, it's um, sometimes I feel like I lose her. 
And then sometimes she comes back. <laughs> I speak about myself third person. So <laughs> yeah, so but it's it's uh, you're allowed because you're um, an artist, and and sometimes <laughs> it. I I love this this discussion about how mm. the persona it becomes it becomes an iconic thing. It becomes a symbol, mm. like Batman. You know, in the comics, you <laughs> yeah. know, Batman is supposed to be a symbol. It's not like a personification. It's totally. it's, it's it's a symbol of uh, fighting for justice. I can no? feel the nerd in you here. It's coming <laughs> out, you know, <laughs> and you're you're, you're, you're wearing out. all in black. You know, the the latest Batman. It's all dark. You know, goth Batman. Yeah, true, <laughs> Sorry, true. but but it's always interesting to to hear how you how you you know because it is a job. It's 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 a, yeah. it's a work of art. Your your persona, yeah. And you've been incredibly consistent consistent all throughout your career. That's why I ask. Like, mm. how, <laughs> like, do you ever sometimes think, "Wow, I'd like to just um, grow my hair out and and become <laughs> a bit of a hippie and and and, and, and not be so well, sharply dressed all the time and stuff." Talking and about just, Bowie, he would do that really well. But I think he. You know, it would change personas, but at the heart of it, it always made you believe that it was believable, it was honest, and it was him. I don't know how he did that. He's a real chameleon. Um, but few, I don't think I belong to that category. I think I belong more in the Patti Smith category. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It yeah. does. Well, you, so you're playing tonight at 11.30 yeah. at the <laughs> WeGo stage, which is... Over there, yes, uh, yeah, we are the radio, so that was really yeah, that, helpful. That, that, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> another well, finger ben pointing, is pointing towards over there. some over there, <laughs> oh, over there. Yeah, you know where that is at home through the loudspeakers. <laughs> over there, you can feel it. It's because yesterday we we had we had um when when the gates open we have audiences um for for when we're interviewing people. Oh, so I, I, got, I got I got used to it. And it's it's quite strange. Isn't it? But yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, um, <clears throat> there's no one there. Cool. Uh, and Sunday uh, at Rasmatas. Yes. Wow, uh, with with Beck? With Beck, <gasps> yeah. I, I yeah, please he, come. Uh, come, people. It's going to be amazing. Well, I, I don't one. think you're going to have a lack of people. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, really yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's going to be so much positive response from the Primavera La Ciutat gigs in general. Um, uh, but especially Rasmataz, it's an incredible venue. Oh, Beck, yeah. do you have a do you have a do you have a uh, friendship with Beck or is it? I don't know. He, we share the same management. Okay, but um, you haven't ever. I've never. Conversed. I mean, I met him once, but a, a while ago. So I, we're not friends. I don't know him. You know. Oh, he's a very nice lad. I'm yeah, nice I'm sure. I'm I think sure. he is. Yeah, and yeah, and I admire him a lot. Oh yeah, there's definitely a, a collaboration <laughs> will most likely come out of that that, <laughs> that night as well. Well, thank you so much. Well, Jenny thank Beth. you thank guys. You. Thank you for having me, and well done on doing this. It's really great. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you, thank you, Jenny. We 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 love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Bye. RPS. Love from Primavera Sound 2022. Proudly presented by Cupra.